So last week, um, we were in chapter 1 of John, and that's called the prologue through verse 18, the introduction to John's gospel. And I shared with you eight themes that are, are highlighted there, and then they appear throughout the gospel. And so we see some of those themes in chapter 3 in this conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. For example, um, there's a reference to creation. The, uh, at the beginning of John, it said, in the beginning, and so we, we connect automatically with the creation story in Genesis 1. So then here in chapter 3, in verse 8, Jesus says, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And so that might remind us of the second creation, or of the creation story back in Genesis 1 and verse 2. It says, Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And so the same word is used um, either to mean wind or breath or spirit. And we find it back in Genesis. We find it also here in chapter 3 in John. Another is the origin and the identity of Jesus. And so Nicodemus comes and he opens his, his questioning by saying, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. So origins. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. So uh, Nicodemus doesn't really understand what he is saying, but he speaks the truth about Jesus' origins. You are from God. But then he doesn't understand completely as he doesn't realize that Jesus is the real presence of God in our midst, God with us. There's also the theme of light and darkness, where Jesus says the light has come into the world and the people loved darkness rather than light. And finally, there's relationship, where Jesus says no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above, or maybe we have heard it translated born anew or born again. He's talking about our being a child of God, so relationship. So again, I hope it's helpful to see those, those themes as they started in the prologue and as, the, as we hear them again as we read further into John's gospel. The Book Tribe is, is reading a book by N.T. Wright. It's called Surprised by Scripture. And last Wednesday in our conversations, we were kind of talking about N.T. Wright and wondering about his views on some of the contemporary topics that we struggle with today. So I, I did a little Google search and I didn't necessarily find an answer to our question, but I did find an interview that he had done and was published in the Atlantic magazine. And he said he believes that most people have no framework to help them navigate a time of political turmoil and division like we find ourselves in today. Or repeat that, most people, he believes, have no framework to help them navigate a time of political turmoil and division like we find ourselves in today. He says, without the guiding story of Christianity, conflict and moral confusion thrive. Now, obviously, many today are wrapped up in the conflict that seems to consume us and our country. And moral confusion naturally goes hand in hand as the way we treat others with contempt and hatred and division. Ignoring moral laws like treat others as you want to be treated or do not judge others or respect others. So can you think of someone, or maybe it's plural, maybe it's some ones that you have judged, that you have not respected, that you have treated other than the way you hope to be treated? I confess I certainly have. And if the the Christian story is to be our guide, what does it teach us, and how are we to live today and with this current cultural climate? Jesus says to Nicodemus, very truly I tell you, no one can see, or maybe you're familiar with, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born again. We're familiar with this this, uh, idea of being born again, but I think we've pretty much flattened it out and we've taken all the life out of it. 
it becomes something that being born again means that it's one dimensional, it's requirement for us to be saved. And we've done the same with, with baptism. Jesus says we must be born of water and the Spirit, tells this in Nicodemus. And so we flatten that out as well to mean that's what we need to do to qualify for eternal life. If you're baptized, you're in. If you're not baptized, then you're out. Maybe we have a tendency to do this, taking what is so full of life and possibilities and turning it into laws and requirements and in the process sucking all the life out of them. Being born again is about all the themes that we hear in the prologue. It's about new creation. It's about origins and identity. It's about light dawning into a dark world. And it's about healthy and whole relationships and our abiding there. And all of these are for you. That's the message of the gospel. This is about literally becoming a child of God with a new identity and a new name, a new family, and a new life. So connecting again back to the prologue in chapter 1, John says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world, and to all who receive him, to all who believe in his name, he gives the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. And so this is the Christian story. This story is our guide. Jesus is telling Nicodemus about becoming a child of God. And you are a child of God. You are a new creation. And with your new identity, you have a new story as your guide. A light for the path ahead. And so what does that look like in our lives? I admit I can think of of someone I can move toward in relationship, instead of remaining kind of standing back and remaining aloof, to cultivate that relationship and to seek seek to abide there. How about you? Is there someone that you can forgive a wrong that you've, you've experienced? Is there someone from whom you need to be forgiven? Who do you judge based on differences rather than finding what you share in common? and developing a relationship based on what you share instead of where your differences are. And you have a relationship in spite of your differences. Now, it's true we are embroiled in a time of political turmoil and division. But there are beginning to be voices calling us to seek common ground, to find what we agree on rather than only what we disagree on, calling us to treat others with respect, assuming best intentions, even love your enemies. The Christian story has always been this guide, calling us to this way of life. Now, we haven't always had the ears to hear, but Lent calls us to turn back to God, to seek God's wisdom and guidance, and to strive to follow the way of God's Son. We don't need to be lost in the wilderness of conflict and moral confusion like everyone else. We have a guide for the journey who shows us how to have have life and to have it abundantly. Amen.